Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays City Tips, where I review your cities and give you tips on how to improve them. Today's city is New York, which was submitted by G Money, who is a patron. Thank you so much for your support. And it's built on the Murky Coast map from the Campus DLC. This is a lightly modded build, and they've stated that their skill level is intermediate. This build has a very intricate storyline, and I do not want to butcher it. So I'm going to link it in the video description and give you the cliff notes right now. Basically, this whole region has developed around its industries, which include a oil industry, an ore industry, a farming industry, and a forestry industry. And there are portions of the industries of each of them that are left behind. And some of them are still functional, some of them are not. And there's a rationale for all of that. And the core part of the community that you're seeing right now was actually a grant from the owner of the original farm with a specific master plan identified. It's just a really great story. And I really believe that this is how the best cities are developed with an understanding of why the city is the way it is. So please open up the video description, take a look. It's a great story and G Money, Keep up the good work. Now let's talk about what City Tips is. This is an opportunity for me to review your city and give you tips on how to improve. It's also an opportunity for the community to share ideas rather than just look at my builds and for the community to comment on your builds. And it's also an opportunity for you to get a City Planner City Score. What this isn't is an opportunity for negativity or roasting. Remember, I'm here to help you, not poke fun at you or make you feel uncomfortable. This should be a relaxing experience where you get constructive feedback that you can use to improve your city. Now let's take a look at how I review and score the cities. We take a look at the map, the city layout and roadway configuration, land use planning, transit, city services, unique features, aesthetics, and then we give an overall city planner city score and compare it to the previous builds. This is the first time that we've reviewed a city since February 26, 2022. And if you're happy to see that this series is back, hit the like button. And if you prefer other series, hit the like button for that too. And in either way, let me know in the comments what you'd rather see. And if you don't want to say anything, why not just drop an emoji telling me how you feel about the series? Either way, it's engagement and it makes YouTube like the video more. Without any further ado, let's jump right in. First up, let's talk about the map. Now this is built on the murky coast map that came with the campus DLC. And this is a really interesting map. You get two rivers here that start on the edge of the map and they meet in the middle and then dump out into this bay right here, which I think is super cool. This is an interesting map where you could focus on expanding towards this hillside over here and build around the rivers, or you could decide, you know what, I don't want to build this way. I'd actually love to have a coastal city and you could expand out this way. It's really your call. And that flexibility is super, super cool. The starting tile is right here. And with that starting tile, you have access to fertile grounds and that's kind of about it some forestry as well there are other industry spots available which you can see right here so or all over the place the oil the fertile grounds so lots of industrial opportunities here so it makes sense that g money decided to build on this map there's one unique thing about this map that i really wanted to point out on the starting tile you have access to this interstate right here but there's this other highway right over here and it's not connected to this one so if you're going to build on this map, I want you to really pay attention to one thing. You're going to need to make sure that before you connect to both of these, you have some sort of arterial connection, be that a highway or an arterial road. And what you see that G money has done is they've monetized this. So they are absolutely taking advantage of this by collecting some revenue, which is totally fine. Personally, I might have just made a highway connection right here and use that to kind of add an interchange into this area but this is a perfectly reasonable solution as well. This is a great map. Anytime you choose a vanilla map, I'm gonna probably just give you five out of five because they're built to be balanced and built to have a number of play styles. They're great maps, five out of five. Next up, let's talk about the city layout and overall roadway configuration. And we're gonna spend some time here, both the good and the bad. And we'll start out with the good. Generally, I like the layout of this city. And the main reason I like it is that it's organic and natural. This city has developed around its industries and some of those industries are still present. You see that from the farm industry right here, the forestry industry, they are still present within the community and the roadway network developed around it. In some of the smaller communities, you see the same thing. The industry is leading the way and that is generally really, really good to see. 
And speaking of these small towns on the outskirt, I just love this. The idea that rather than making this a pretty beachfront town, it's an industrial waterfront. That's very reasonable. That happens. So instead of turning this into a nice, pleasant beach, there's a key wall and a cargo terminal right here and some shipbuilding operations. That happens. That happens so much. And you start to see some of the more pretty parts of the community a little bit further inland, which can feel uncomfortable if that is what you're building in a game like this. But it happens all the time in reality because it's such valuable land from a transportation standpoint. The main part of this city is master planned, and I absolutely love the idea of this. So the idea was that the owner of this farm right here, when they passed away, gave this land to the city with some deed restrictions so that it could be master planned in the way that they saw fit. And an architect and developer came through and actually built this area out. So things that were specified were the location of the park, location of the university and the zoo. So just a super cool idea. And I absolutely love that. And I think it really comes together well. It feels master planned because of how well integrated the university is into the fabric of the city's grid, how disruptive this is without being in, uh, obtrusive, if that makes any sense. And it just all feels like it was thought out. I also really love the amount of bridging through here. Now, I don't love every bridge like this one. I don't love, but I do love the number of bridges. So I've I've shown you my builds even where I just I go bridge crazy. That's not reality. Bridges are expensive. They're difficult to build and they're pinch points. These are places where you've got to get creative with your traffic because everything's going to funnel to these couple of locations. So G money. Excellent job with that. And then I want to talk about pedestrian connectivity because that is one of the really good things that's happened here as well. So there are lots of little paths through here where you can, as a pedestrian, have a shorter trip than a driver. Things like this, because there's an acknowledgement that it is harder to get around as a pedestrian than as a motor vehicle driver. So as a result, having these little cut throughs makes your trip a lot shorter. G money, excellent job thinking about that because they're super important. But not everything is good, and I think we have to talk about some of the bad things. And the very first bad thing I want to talk about is all over the place. Respect the topography. There is a lack of respect of the topography in this map. All over there are things like this, and not everything needs to be totally flat. It honestly really irks me when I see builds that are just like a bunch of flat pads. And, you know, we have one flat pad here and another right here. There are slopes in reality, but this is a little too much. And it honestly makes me think that maybe some of these things are just inappropriately placed. Let's take an example, these factories right here. Is this really where we wanna place this? In the side of a cliff? Probably not. We might wanna look around because there are some excellent places to build this. Here's an excellent spot for that warehouse potentially. And over here, we could level some of this and this could be a good spot for the factory. And it's not as if grading is not occurring. It's happening here for this uh, cargo airport. So that's that's something that I think is a little bit of a problem. The next major concern for me is roadway hierarchy. So in some cases, it has been respected. Right here, we've got this arterial, the highway connecting up to a collector, which is Winston Avenue. And then this happens. I don't know what this is, if it was a way to try to control traffic through here, but it's not working and it's a problem. Or maybe it is working, but it's a problem. So this should just be a collector all the way through. In a vanilla game, it's a collector because of its capacity and the speed. So what I mean is if you look at your medium roads, which are collectors, the speed is 50 here. The local roads, the speed is 40. And I think that's kilometers. Large road, same thing here, 60. So that has a couple of consequences. You have a shorter trip because it's faster. Generally, these roads are more direct. And as a result, the Sims will flock to these roads and use them over local cut throughs. When you look through here, that's not what's happening. So that is a concern of mine. And then there are areas like this where this clearly needs to be an arterial. There needs to be an arterial somewhere here to focus this traffic. And we don't have it. So as a result, we see kind of a crushing amount of traffic through here. And I understand that if we take a look at our traffic flow, it says 86%. It's a little bit misleading if we're being completely honest. One of the reasons it says that is we've got a really thin roadway network in some areas. 
So right here, for instance, we're looking at blocks that are four units wide, five units wide, compounded, stacked up right next to each other. So the consequence of that is when you're averaging out the traffic flow, you end up with a really high traffic flow. So this is also happening because I removed TMPE from this build. So G Money had TMPE in the build. And one of the things that they mentioned is that the traffic flow would eventually just tank. And I experienced the exact same thing. In fact, I had the traffic flow get as low as the upper 60%. And the reason for that is that the hierarchy is just not present. And as a result, vehicles are all over, they're backing up. They back up here, this backs up this road, this road backs up this road, and it just cascades out. It was sub 70% with the spawning on, which I think is, is, is really telling. So some of these things just need to be fixed. Things like this that just need to be fixed. So there are some other concerns. So even with this, there is a problem with something in the roadway network. So some of these roads, for whatever reason, aren't drawing that much traffic. So this right here, we're seeing one vehicle. I'm gonna upgrade this just to see if we formalize this and we say, you know what? This is the priority road. Will we get traffic on here or not? So I'll come through priority road. The consequence of this is that if we see this and we try to add signals now, we've got stop signs all up and down here. Signal where we have a collector, collector connection. Are we gonna see the traffic gravitate towards this? Let's see, speed this up for a minute and we will see. Let's click right here and look where all the traffic's going. The traffic's coming in here, dipping down to this local road and then coming around this area. Something is broken here and there are a couple of places along this collector where you see it. Here's another one. I tried my best playing with this build, trying to fix this area. And the only way I was able to fix it is to rebuild it without anarchy on. So I think that there are some node disconnection issues and I couldn't figure out exactly where they were, but there's something going on here. So this is kind of where mods can get you into trouble, where you might wonder, what's wrong with my traffic flow? What's wrong with it? It is that nodes aren't connected because you used a mod. This needs to be rebuilt. If you rebuild this, everything will spring back to life and be good as new. But until then, you're gonna see traffic back here. The other reason that that's happening is you've got this highway right here that's connected up to this highway via this arterial right here. And there are some local roads linking up this with our city. So this is a problem too. So if we click on this, we can see that, the, wow, look at that traffic that's going through here. And then look at how there are some things happening here. We don't have a full movement right here. So as a result, the local roads are being utilized to get to this arterial up here. You see it's happening here too. Rather than coming down and using this road, they're just deciding that this is a better path for them. Couple of reasons for that. First of all, we don't continue our collector down, we stop and now it's a local road. And the game has determined that this is a faster route for these Sims. I would just really give some thought to roadway hierarchy and how it works. Just making sure that generally you can get from one neighborhood to the next on a high capacity road. And uh, that will solve a lot of the traffic problems in this city. There's an expressway over here. I love the idea of that. I just think it doesn't make sense right here. So we have this local bridge right here, then this expressway up here. The expressway connects across, but then over here, it provides access to a slaughterhouse and nothing else. Really, this should probably connect right here since this is the major through road. So it's a little bit of confusion over what the principal movement through here is. And that's kind of replicated throughout the entire map. So that is something that I would look to remedy as well. But then the biggest issue beyond hierarchy is this right here. We've got a lot of cheater roads and spaghetti, and that leads to some traffic concerns and backup and confusion. And if we eliminate some of this spaghetti, we're gonna be in a better spot overall. Where it gets the most challenging, I think is over here. So you see that we've got this interchange right here. Then we've got these other roads, these kind of random roads that are popping up through here. So we've got this local road. Let's see what this is actually doing. Oh, it's actually an interchange, but only a partial interchange, but there's already an interchange right here. So I added measure it to the build because I think this is really important to see. So like this, we'll say that this is the center of this interchange. That is less than a quarter mile. The Federal Highway Administration in the US says that a half mile is the very minimum spacing for two interchanges. This one's okay-ish because the city hasn't developed all that much over here, but this will back up in the future. 
over here where the city has developed, we already see it. This is a little over half mile, so that's great, but we already see backups and that's because we've got these other cheater ramps here providing additional service. And again, I said half mile is the minimum, half mile or 800 meters. What they would really like to see is one mile, two miles or four miles or 1.5 kilometers, three kilometers or 6.5 kilometers. That That is a better spacing. So we don't see anything like that here. So this as the crow flies is a little bit over a mile or a little bit over 1.5 kilometers. So this is good as the crow flies. It's even longer in reality. That might mean that this interchange right here shouldn't exist. Or perhaps you keep this one and you get rid of this one because these are also appropriately spaced apart a little under a mile, a little under 1.5 kilometers. So we are good there. Now more of a minor quibble. You, there are a number of locations through the city where you see this. And this is just too many junctions on a major corridor that is really focused on mobility and not access. I think that you could have half as many junctions here if you want traffic to flow appropriately. I would look at this and say, maybe we just go like this. So what I've done here is make these block lengths longer. We've called to sack these out. It definitely stinks. It does happen. I would, I would expect bollards and not just like a weird cul-de-sac. But this is the only way to not have extreme backups in an area like this is to make sure that you're, you don't have too many junctions through here. Remember this road, the purpose of a collector is to prioritize travel over longer distances and not access to a specific building. And when you're adding all of that access and you're slowing down that regional mobility that would, you'd expect to see on a road like this, and that is a huge issue. And then lastly, I want to talk about the rail network. Now, I hate to pick on this because I know that this is a big part of the story of this build. The problem is that rather than the city developing around the rail, it appears that the other way around has occurred. It's very obvious to see that that's happened because we have a tunnel underneath here rather than the roadway network going up and over this or just terminating and saying we can't cross the rail. That's what happens in reality. So you have this all over the place and the result is pretty unrealistic looking rail networks. I would go in and I'd use the arrange at line mode, just really rethought the whole train network through here. That is the path that the train should have followed. It should have cut right through Starkton and all these roads should have either been conflict points or cul-de-sacs. And that would have, to me, made the rail network feel a ton better. Now, I'm not sure if G Money was using this mod, but get it if you if you if you aren't, you get the network multi-tool. And this is the sort of thing that would make your rail network make a ton more sense. And then it would potentially help you get rid of some of this stuff too. The other thing is I would definitely go through and slope a bunch of these because these slopes are just way extreme. 19.7% is not good for rail. Even this 4.4 might not be great. Maybe this is a little bit better. We're getting to three. That is kind of what rail needs to not derail. And then I, I kind of want to leave, to leave on some general tips. I think that there are a few things that are kind of unreasonable that are easy fixes. I would get rid of some of these cargo airports. I know it's again part of the story, but to me, it kind of takes away. There's one right here. There's one right here. And then there's another one over here. That's just a lot of cargo airports. So you're creating a lot of traffic problems and it's just more than most communities of this size would have. You'd expect maybe one. Next, with some of your industries, I would give some of your warehouses some thought. So I know Stark drilling area is, you know, part of this over here as well. I have no problem with it being split. I actually think it's really charming and neat. My bigger problem is that we're trying to rely on the rail network right here, but we've also got warehouses right here and the warehouses have some finished goods from this industry. Maybe we just have extractors over here and we do all of our processing over here and then we can concentrate our warehouses down here. And rather than having the warehouses here and having some of these vehicles go over here, we just have them driving directly over to our cargo train terminal. I think this is confuses things and adds a bunch of traffic to this area. And I think what you're seeing is actually something you didn't mean to have happen, which is that to fill up this terminal right here, this warehouse, you're getting some of the traffic coming from here. But when I've looked at this, you also have some traffic coming from over here to fill up the warehouse. So as a result, if you kind of take a step back and you think we're only going to do extraction over here, we're only going to have 
uh, our, our processing over here. You can have extracting over here as well. That's fine. I think that you end up with a much better uh, solution for traffic over here. And it gets rid of a lot of the traffic that you see over here. And then finally, I noticed that there's a lack of local connectivity between some of these areas. So either or company, which I'm just gonna say it, that's an awesome name. There is no local connection between either or and the Stark drilling area. Now that might not seem on its face like an issue. Problem is we actually have a shipyard over here and we have this car factory. And look at this actually, the car factory is missing metals. So that local connection between either or could be really valuable. So because we're missing and they got their metals now, they have to take the highway. So we'll click on this and we see that a lot of this industrial traffic is hopping onto the Phillips Street, I love the name, not the two L's though. <laughs> so they're hopping on this road and they're going down the interstate to get over here. Yeah, you see it, it they, they are actually coming over here. This peters out, but I'm guessing that he just got back from the shipyard dropping off materials. So that is why it's so important to have that local connectivity. And you can still have a highway, don't get me wrong. So maybe instead of doing all of that connection over here, you end up with this local connection across. This is super ugly. It's bridged where it shouldn't be there. It's lumpy and bumpy. But imagine this connection here. So we'll speed this up. And I'm just curious as to how many vehicles are going to use this. I'm going to guess this is going to get some traffic. And there we go. I'm let this get, letting this go. And as the longer it's here, the more of those little arrows you start to see through here. It's public transit port and cargo, which is kind of interesting and then just general industrial sorts of traffic. So I think that that is a huge, huge benefit over here. You're taking this industry that is meant to stay local and forcing it to stay local and serve these areas. And you see the trip that it's making. They're actually going out to these areas that need service. And overall, what this will mean is that your industry gets the materials that it needs much, much, much quicker. So for city laid out and roadway configuration, I think the bones are here to have something special. You just got to cut down on some of the cheese and really focus on thinking about the why in some of these some of these areas, especially with the rail network and really coming around to to making that a more prominent feature of the build and really making some of those local connections. So for city layout, we're going to go a little bit lower with the two out of five, but this is totally fixable. It's a lot of the stuff on the outside that I don't like. A lot of the stuff in the core city is great. Next, I want to talk about the land use planning. And now this is something that I think that G Money has really excelled at. We've got a mix of uses. We've got residential next to office, next to commercial, next to some of our special districts. We don't have uses that conflict next to one another. And when we do have uses that conflict, they are modestly placed. So right here, for instance, we've got this little commercial area, some coffee shops and stores that these residents could go and and take advantage of, but we're not overly concentrating these so that the commercial has a negative impact right here on our residential. And what you see is that this pattern exists throughout the entire map, regardless of whether you're out in the old town, the lower density area, or you're out in one of the company towns, you see that there's a mix of uses and some logic and thought behind all of this. A couple of really special things I want to point out there are some things like this. We've got a little bit of industry mixed in with this financial district, which is part of the story of the map. And I absolutely adore that. The same thing is happening over here with our old forestry industry. This is actually paused and that's because they went bankrupt and it's worked into this area. The land uses, even though they might not seem compatible, are working together. And that is just super, super cool. Now, the only concern that I have is that some of the heights just don't make sense. So there is no gradation of the heights. So rather than building up, you just have towers popping up out of the middle of nowhere. I would definitely think about applying a height restriction globally and then going through in each of these little districts like the green district and saying, here's where we want it. And then filling in some of these gaps with some lower density uses, be that some industrial like you have right here or residential kind of backing out into this area, I think would make a lot of sense because it feels very abrupt right now. But this is a really minor quibble because they've done such a great job of mixing their uses throughout the entire map, creating small towns to support the industri industry areas. This makes a ton of sense. We are going to give them a score of four out of five for the land use planning. Excellent, excellent, excellent work. Next up, I want to talk transit. And this is going to be an interesting one because I think the problem in this city is that there's just way too much of it. 
Now, looking at the build, I'm pretty sure that they don't have Snowfall, Sunset Harbor, Natural Disasters. Now, there's a variety of reasons for that, but Transit is one of the things that gave me a clue to that because they've included almost every form of transit except for cable cars, trams, and taxis. Those come with Snowfall and with Sunset Harbor. So I think they'd be in here if they had those DLCs. Everywhere throughout the map, there is a transit line and generally that's a good thing. The problem is that some of these transit lines are just so close to one another that they're cannibalizing each other. So an example of this, we have all of these lines that are paralleling in some locations. We have this white line that is coming through here and it is more or less mirroring the subway line right here. So that means that even though the subway line could do the trick, Sims might hop on the bus line that's slower because it provides more direct access. Now, that bus line is gonna be harder to, to actually make it work well, and it's gonna disrupt your traffic flow. Whereas the Metro, there's not any disruption there. You could add a couple of vehicles there and be just fine. Another problem is that not all of the routes are necessarily logical. So it seems like we've got a lot of coverage routes and these routes are trying to get back and forth between all of these bus terminals. But we've got all of these hubs and terminals and all of these routes pinging back and forth between these. And the result is that there is lower utilization per vehicle. And you start to see it when you look through these bus routes, just doing some basic division right here. Eight vehicles, 88 passengers, 11 passengers per vehicle. That's not very efficient at all. So I'd love to see those numbers go up where we start to see things like eight vehicles with 200 passengers. That's a lot more reasonable. The other thing is we've got these sorts of uh, transit that exist for the sake of existing. So we have a trolley bus, for instance, and this trolley bus is really grabbing people from this train station. They're walking down here, getting to the trolley bus, using this as a kind of the first and last mile to get around here. I think it looks like a kind of a thought experiment, and I think that's completely fine. Experiment and learn how to use it. But if we're talking about efficient, this is probably best handled by a bus. You don't need a trolley bus here. And if you're going to have a trolley bus, I think the best place to have the trolley bus is probably up here, where instead we have a normal bus. That bus would really struggle to scale this hill, and that's certainly a consideration with a the bus. Then we have some novelty transportation. So right here, for instance, We've got the space line, which has this elevated metro station with shops, and it goes here. <laughs> so this, there's really no reason for this to exist. It just happens to. This is very expensive. Think about the cost of this. One of the things that G Money was really concerned about was their budget, and their budget concerns come down to things like this. This station costs $560 per week to operate, and you have two of them. So that's a thousand. If you look at the bus depot, that's 720 per week for the bus depot. And that's serving how many routes? So if this is serving two very dense areas and it raises the tax value around there, it makes a lot of sense. If it's pinging back and forth as a novelty service, it doesn't make a ton of sense. I think the idea here was that you get people from this a sunken platform station up to here, but I just kind of question why you would do that. Uh, potentially a better solution here would have been to rather than looping this back around, considering you could already get from here to here using this purple line. You could, if you wanted to stick with heavier, higher quality transit, take this and loop this back up and go up here. That would be another way you can handle that. Now, I don't know that in a million years you'd see a subway dug up a mountain. Don't know how reasonable that is, but that would be more reasonable in my estimation than what is currently happening. And what I think this comes down to is again, hierarchy. So this right here is a collector trip. And rather than using a lower tier version of transit, we're using what is really meant to be an arterial service. A train is an arterial service. A Metro is an arterial service. You don't take those sorts of services for first and last mile connections. That's what a bus does. And speaking of that, there are a lot of passenger trains around the region. And, you know, I get why you might want these. I think that they're a little bit overdone in this map. And maybe the biggest concern I have is that there are inner city trains allowed at almost all of the passenger rail stations throughout the map. We've already got the multi-platform end station, 
which is carrying an incredible amount of, of passenger traffic weekly. This is probably the best space to have your inner city trains because you can give them their own platform and not see backups. So I would expect that as your city grows and progresses with all of these passenger stations allowing inner city trains, you're going to see problems there or you're going to see problems at the supporting services like right here. So I think the dominant story with transit here is that less is more. Take it down a notch and I think you'll see a better result. And because of some of the confusion around transit, we're giving them a score of two out of five. Next up, we're going to talk about our city services. And this is basically everything from schools to jails to uh, the college right here. So this is the main reason that this city has such a varying and fluctuating budget and not one that's in the green almost all the time. So let's start out in our budget menu because it, there's something really alarming in here, and that is the healthcare budget. Over a hundred thousand dollars per week spent on healthcare. It's really because there's way too many available beds in the hospital. So there's a couple of things like this right here where you've got clinics right next to one another, not necessary. The reason this is occurring is actually a zoning issue. I don't know if this is meant to be here, but we've got these two industrial spaces that are poisoning the residential spaces right here. Everyone's sick. So you have to have these two clinics here to solve that. And then you're causing a death care issue as well. And if we look at that, we see that there are a lot of dead people here. For a city of less than 100,000 to see 800 deceased people, and I've never seen it get lower than that in the city, that is a concern. So that comes down to sound and pollution and traffic, all of these things mixed together, plus the spacing of some of these city services. And I think that's where you start to see some issues as well. So with death care, for instance, you start to see that some of these are very close to one another, mere blocks apart and located in places where it's maybe not the most efficient. Right here, we're on the end of a cul-de-sac near an industry that shut down. Probably not the best place for this. Right here, we've got a full cemetery, so that one's not helping at all. And then we've got this death care right here, right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. They're all within blocks of one another. So there, this wouldn't be a problem if they were spread out, but there are areas like this that have no coverage at all in a cemetery that is half full. So eventually, we're gonna see even more things like this happening. So death care, that's the problem there. For healthcare, it's just too much of it here. So this is a medical laboratory, that's not a problem. This again will function as a hospital, keep that in mind, because this is actually like a super clinic. And then we do have a high capacity hospital here. Look at this, nobody treated last week, no patients right now, no ambulances in use, $4,000 a week in upkeep. This could be turned off and though everyone will be sad, they are fine. They are fine. And I'll tell you why. We've got a clinic right there. We've got a hospital right here. And no one used this. Everyone's using this clinic right here. <laughs> Five patients per week, four ambulances in use. The game doesn't know how to handle all of these clinics and all of these hospitals. So for whatever reason, it seems like they're defaulting to these clinics. The clinics have a lot of utilization. And then the hospitals, another high capacity hospital, 4,000 a week, absolutely zero use. So think about how much you need all of these facilities. Another one to focus on is the sports halls and gymnasiums, 2,400 per week. And I've seen them all throughout the build. So there's one right here and there's another one right here, 2,400 per week. So the two of these is more expensive than a high capacity hospital. Now, here's what I want you to focus on. So we got to move this and look at the radius it covers. So you see the little blue right there and it covers a fairly large radius, which makes sense when you think of how expensive it is. And then we've got our other one. It's right here. So if we move this, we can see that the, the radius for these buildings overlaps some and we don't even have residential in between these. We have a little bit. So these residents right here are super healthy. They're getting the benefit of this and this one, but that's not helping our city budget. So I think that going through and right sizing these city services is gonna do a lot for the build. So that is something that I would focus on right away. And it's kind of like that generally with city services in this build. If we take a look at our education, what we're gonna see is that elementary school, we have way too much capacity, way too much capacity for high schools over double, for universities, we have a crazy amount of capacity. 
Now I get it. This build is built around this campus right here, but there's just way too much capacity here. I think the thing that stood out to me is that at this university, we only are at a claim level because we don't have enough students. And look at the expense of this, $60,000 per year. Now there are ways to fix this. So I see that the academic staff are pumped up here. We don't even need any more academic staff to reach our academic work. So turning this down, we are immediately gonna take our expenses and make them a little more reasonable. We could also go into our varsity sports since we focused on that so much here and turn on our sponsorship deals policy, which will decrease the overall campus varsity sports upkeep by, by 8%. You get a brand on the logo uh, of, the, of the billboard. Not a big deal. You don't zoom into that a lot. So we're taking this all and we're lowering the price. And then we have this advertisement campaign. So this will draw more traffic to these areas and it'll cost more per week, but you're going to get that ticket sales. And that's important because right here, the ticket sales are turned up to 40. So if you're going to have expensive tickets, you better have this advertisement campaign policy on. Now, if your goal was to load up the university with, with students, universal education needs to be on. Um, that's a way to get more people to this campus. And I know that industry 4.0 is enabled in this city. So that would make a lot of sense to get that, to get that going in here as well. So those are the sorts of things that are problematic from a city services standpoint. From a good standpoint, we are looking at our crime rate. It is very low. I wouldn't say that we're dramatically overbuilding our police stations. Uh, there are some areas that lack coverage. Not a big deal though. You could definitely spread some of these out for our financial coverage, which is a new one. It's covered pretty well. My biggest concern here would be that our coverage for our international trade building is really close to our stock exchange. which kind of negates the whole benefit of this building right here. So this is 2000 per week. The whole reason that this exists is to really extend the benefit from the stock exchange, the increased tax radius and, and the benefit that you get with that. So if you have these next to one another, they're doing the same thing and they're costing approximately the same amount, a little over 2000 for the stock exchange and 2000 exactly for the international trade building. That is a problem. Granted, you could just say it's a tourist building to me and it's fine, but that is a concern for sure. Parks coverage is absolutely outstanding. Now there is, this is a little bit misleading because they have used a parking lot asset all over the place and those are showing up as parks, but still there are a lot of parks here. Every kid in this city could walk to a park, no problem. And I absolutely adore that. They've given that thought to what it would be like to live here. And I think that's really demonstrable by the number of parks that you have there because everyone wants to live by a park. I don't care where you live in the world. If you want, if you live in a neighborhood, one of the things you're going to think about is how close am I to outdoor, outdoor recreation? How close am I to being able to grab a bite to eat? How close am I to my work? Those are all considerations. And they've really given a lot, a lot of thought to that here with their city services. Now for fire coverage, they've gone full Verde beach. <laughs> now I, it's not their fault. It's not their fault. I don't believe that they have natural disasters. I didn't see any of the natural disasters buildings in here. So if we take a look at this, no coverage at all. So I'm not going to dent them on the score for that necessarily, but I would definitely recommend if you get natural disasters, you're going to need to do some work to, to ensure that coverage is good. And you've seen a number of fires through here. I actually had to turn off fire spreading because this whole build just burns to the ground without some of the natural disasters buildings. In terms of water and power, we've got water. It's kind of just here. It's fine. The sanitary sewer, there's a little bit of a plant right here. I don't understand why there's a train station next to it. Nobody's using it. And I don't know why anyone would. You have this really high capacity train station serving what is basically a sleepy treatment plant. It just like that just doesn't make any sense. Uh, and I would consider moving this closer to the water because that's kind of where it would be processed. So even though it's inland, doesn't mean that it should be far from water. You probably want that close to water to dump the clean or uh, treated water back into the water system. And then for power, this is one of the things I have a concern with. There are these wave power plants. So I, I get the thought here. The thought is there are lots of waves right here. It's the river, but I think these actually go in the deep sea. So rather than being in a river, these should actually be out here. And that would make them a little bit more reasonable and plausible. And then there are windmills, wind turbines all over the place. I think you can get away with one or two on campus, 
but I question some of these other ones that you see through here. Uh, but good coverage of almost everything. I'm only docking points in this because there's just way too much of everything. And the net result is a bad budgetary standpoint. So I think that if these were tweaked and things were put in line, rather than seeing a budget that is, it's slowly going up. I think you'd see a budget that just rockets through the roof. Maybe you could lower taxes or add more city services in, in another way, parks and things of that nature, or lower prices for things. So I think that for city services, we've got to give a score of three out of five. Again, very, very, very fixable. Good job. Next up are unique features. This is the buildings, the parks, the universities, and things of that nature and the specialty buildings that, that are worked into the build. And I think that this is absolutely one of the strongest parts of this build. So when we look here, they're working in assets that really go well together with some of the park life stuff right here. So we have a science center right next to our zoo. We've also got right here, another science center. We've got a modern art museum and this garden. It all just works and it's blended right into our university. It feels so good. We've got our sports complexes next to our universities, and then we've got a central business district. It's very clear to see because of some of the buildings that have been added to this part of town. So these are some of our unique buildings. It just makes a ton of sense. And then there is this gigantic campus. So in the previous section, I talked about how it is problematic because it overdoes it. But here's the thing, I actually love this campus. I think this campus is well laid out, well designed, and it's clear that this is a campus town. Just look at this thing, it is massive. This feels like, in my community, how we have the University of Wisconsin-Madison, this is how it feels. It's massive. Now, it's not G-Money's fault that the game doesn't allow the importing of students. <laughs> uh, it, that is something that I would honestly expect to see here. And look at some of the details that we've got here. Absolutely beautiful work in the natural environment. I could take a page out of their book because they're just so good at it. And I just love all of the design that they've, that they, they, they've done here. They've worked this into the grid of the community. They've used this to break up the grid. And then there's my favorite part of the build entirely, and it's right here. So what we have is this boardwalk area. Now granted, there's some flickering and different things from that. I'm gonna overlook that because what I see is a really nice mashing of some of the park life assets with seaside resorts. So what you see is we've got these seaside resorts buildings that are being used in kind of a kitschy way. And I think it's awesome. So we have a button boardwalk here where you could go on a Ferris wheel or go on some of these rides. And then you could stay at one of these resorts that is kind of an impersonating a feeling of what used to, used to exist. So here, I think this is very Disney World. And I think that in some builds, you could take these very seriously. And here, I, I, I feel like it's more of a, we're trying to capture the feeling of a place that used to exist. And you kind of see that when you see like the Kitty Cat Cafe right here. It's, it's kind of funny to see these all right next to each other. It just feels awesome. For unique features, uh, I, if I'm gonna get super nitpicky, I think that the one problem I have is that there are maybe too many of the flamboyant unique buildings. So the flamboyant ones are like the Statue of Liberty. We've got what is basically the Space Needle over here, this Observation Tower. And then we've got this Cathedral over here. They are very in your face. And I think that those kind of iconic buildings, unless you're a massive city, you only have one or two. And if you are a massive city, maybe you have a bunch of these. But this is not a massive city. This is a, a moderate sized city. And as a result, I just think that there should maybe be a couple less. But even with that, that's a minor nitpick. They're gonna get a score of 4.5 out of five. This is the strong suit of the build. It's absolutely awesome. And finally is aesthetics. And this is something that, again, I have been talking about this in the previous part of the build. I think that this builder has really, really excelled at. You could tell that they love the detail and they are really going all out. I can just imagine them sitting down and placing each tree thoughtfully through here, thinking about how this feels when you're at this level. How does it feel to be right here? I'm gonna tell you how it feels. It feels pretty darn good because they put a lot of detail and attention into this area. It feels like a special place. Now granted, 
Got to respect the topography a little bit more, but that's okay. I'm going to give them a pass there, especially for stuff like this. Goodness gracious, this is amazing. That absolutely, it, you can't see the individual assets. How cool is that? And then you come over here and just the way that they've worked in some of these fields into the core of this city, absolutely love it. I talked about the density issues before. This is potentially one of those, but I just love to see this sort of thing in the build where you're coming together, mashing these styles, these parks that bring everything together, that tie these areas together and make it a special place. I think that aesthetics is one of the, the places where this builder really excels. They've really spent a lot of time, added a lot of trees, really used a lot of these natural features that were in the build to their advantage. The one place where it kind of falls flat for me, why we're going to take away some points is the transportation network. So again, we've got the spaghetti train networks. We've got some interchange issues, huge recommendation. I would highly recommend going to the, if you don't want to use a lot of mods, that's fine. Use some transportation assets, check out max FX or Yumble's workshops. They have absolutely exceptional interchange designs. And you could just plop them right in here and really elevate your transportation network game. And I mean, Yumble's amazing. He has videos that he can, he'll show you how he's created them and how you can plop them into your build. Max FX just has everything you could ever think of. So the two of them are absolutely fantastic. You could get rid of stuff like this. This is the original interchange that came with the build and really make your city feel special in that particular way. And then one other tip I wanted to give, there are so many bridges in here and it feels like this could be a city of bridges, yet we've got some issues with our bridges. So I just wanted to share this. What I would do here, so these, the, the problem I have is that the spans are different lengths. So it kind of looks unreasonable. The first thing I would do is add in a node at the edge of the water. So maybe right here, add a node, another one right here. And then I'm gonna upgrade this or downgrade this, depending on how you look at it. We're going to make this just a regular bridge segment here and here. And then I want you to go in to move it. We're going to select the nodes outside of the ends now. So that is the two edges of our water. And now we're going to go through here and line up objects. And what that does is make these completely the same length apart and cause a car tornado. And now we're going to use our network multi-tool and set the slope mode. And we'll slope both sides of the bridge and look at that it's perfectly even on all of these it just looks a ton better now we'd have to fix the the, the the ferry lines through here but if you do this on your bridges it just just looks so much better and i'm going to admit that i don't always do this but i'm going to from now on this is something i experimented with because some of the bridges through this build just kind of looked a little wonky so that is one thing that i would absolutely do and then there are some other things that like this is such a pretty bridge. Don't do that to it. <laughs> I would send this over uh, there. This isn't a one way anyway, so it's just kind of splitting for some some reason. I, my guess is they wanted to keep it in the center. Feel free to just pick a side. You don't need to, to do that. Kind of done it over here already anyway. So uh, besides that, though, just really great aesthetics. Work on the transportation network and you've got something really special here. Even things like this ore industry just look absolutely outstanding. So. Keep up the good work with aesthetics. You're doing a good job. Four point. So we'll give them a score of four out of five. And before we give them an overall city planner city score, I think we need to take inventory of what they've done and have a brief city tour.
Oh, and I always love a good city tour. Now we finally get to the city planner city score. So a quick drum roll, please, editor film. And we have a 24.5 out of 35. So this, a lot of these are on the edge and I could see this getting a much higher score with some little refinements. I think the big ones are city layout, just generally focusing on some of the spaghetti, getting rid of that. And then thinking about roadway hierarchy, another big concern in this build. And then just really generally getting those city services in balance. This is a great city. I had a lot of fun playing with this. I'm going to admit to you that I spent hours and hours and hours resolving a couple of the issues with roadway hierarchy and just playing around in this map. I've never played on this map and the way that this builder has designed the city just feels really good and it's it can be a lot of fun just to pick up someone else's map and pretend that you're the new planner coming in and doing a couple of things to make the city a little bit more efficient and effective and i just really had a good time so thank you g money for submitting this and thank all of you for joining me today this has been a lot of fun and i hope that you've enjoyed this if you did, please hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, please consider doing so, especially if you like content like this. And I really cannot wait to see you in the next one. Thank you so much for joining me today. I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.